Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. It is your turn to give testimony. And I pray that this year will be a year of testimony for you in Jesus' name. And from this very night, miracle, signs, and wonders in every life in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this day. We thank you because this year there will be no loss. This year there will be no lack. This year there will be no limitation. And I pray that your mighty power will come upon all your people in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that tonight as we begin the revival of the year, Lord, spirit of revival, pour upon everyone in Jesus' name. We are praying that from this beginning, all problems are rolled away. All sicknesses are rolled away. All infirmities are taken away. Open the windows of heaven right now. Let your blessing come upon your people, my children. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We are looking at Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 1. How wonderful it is as we come to this revival, the first revival of the year. And we come to the beginning of the Bible. We're looking at chapter 1, verse 1. It says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The God we serve is a God of power, it's a God of creation, it's a God of might, a God of strength. And you want to understand that since the beginning of the Bible tells us that in the beginning God, the Almighty God, the Great One God, the self-existent One God, the Eternal One, God, the One that cannot fail, God, the One that is mighty and powerful, in that beginning God created the heaven and the earth. As we look at Mark chapter 10, even Christ himself reminds us that the world which we see, this great world, this wide world, this world with great things and small things, the whole of the universe, everything we see and everything we cannot see, that everything was created by the Almighty God, you want to understand that if you are connected with this God by conversion, if you are connected with this God through the Lord Jesus Christ, everything that is dead in your life, He will recreate. Everything that is missing in your life, He will create in Jesus' name. Your soul needs a recreation. Your spirit needs a recreation. And your body, different parts of your body, needs a replacement or recreation. And we come to that God tonight, who is the God of creation. Hear what Jesus says in Mark chapter 10, verses 5 and 6. And Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart, he wrote this research. But from the beginning, again, Jesus is running to the beginning. As you look at God, as you think about God, as you pray unto God, you want to think about the power of God at the beginning. The goodness of God at the beginning, the, the, the strength of God, the might of God at the beginning. And Jesus goes back to the beginning. He says, because from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. He's telling us that God was responsible for the creation of the whole universe. Jesus said so. You don't allow anybody who does not know as much as Jesus. You don't allow anybody to contradict Jesus in your own sight. If Jesus said, if the word of God says from Genesis Revelation that God is responsible for the creation of the whole universe, then we know that this is the real truth. From the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. Look at chapter, uh, chapter 10, that same chapter, and we're looking at verse 19. It says, Thou knowest, 
He tells us that knowest the commandments. God gave us those commandments because from the very beginning, He was the God that made everything. And because He made everything, He's able, able to sustain all that He has made. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 3. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. You'll see that the world he made is able to sustain that world as well. It tells us, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power. He created everything, now he upholds everything, he sustains everything, he keeps everything by the word of his power. And that word of power is coming your way today. Amen. It will rule every problem away. It will disengage every difficult thing and every power that is working against your life in Jesus' name. Amen. It tells us from the beginning God created and from that beginning he sustains the world by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. You want to understand that in the creation of the world, in the creation of man, in the creation of all things, God the Father was involved, God the Son was involved, and God the Holy Spirit was involved. Look at John. John chapter 1. We're setting this foundation so that you will know whatever needs recreation creation in your life. God is there. He is the eternal one. He is the one that says, I am God. I change not. And because he is God and he changes not, his power has not changed. His mind has not changed. His strength has not changed. And because he has not changed, recreation is taking place in your life today. Break is dead, that brain needs a recreation. It is tonight, it's going to happen. Any hand withered, any leg withered, any part of your body withered, not functioning, not working. Tonight, a recreation is taking place in Jesus' name. It says in John chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning, you see that again, in the beginning, it's telling us in the beginning, in the dateless past was the word, and the word was with God, and the word the Word was God. When he says the Word was with God, separate from God, different from God himself, distinct from God himself, and yet it says the Word was God. What does that mean? Look at verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. It's referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word, capital W, he was made flesh. He was born of a virgin. And then he lived, he dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. That's referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come back to verse 1 again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Look at yourself. You were made by Him. Look at the world around you. Made by Him. Look at the six, the stars, and the moon, and the sun, and the whole universe. The great things we can see. All things were made by Him. And the things we can see to take you to take a telescope to be able to see those things. He says, all things were made by Him. Far away things, nearby things, everything you can ever think about. All things were made by Him. Look at that verse 3 again. And without Him, without the Lord Jesus Christ, was not anything made that was made. In verse 4, in Him was life. If you're going to have life for your spirit and life for your soul and life for your body, in Him was life. And the life was the light of men. Any darkness in your life? Any deformity in your life, any sin you cannot understand in your life, that sin is seeding, that sin is confusing, that sin is like this is in the dark. The light will come to your light today in Jesus' name. And the light shineth, and the light shineth. The light the Lord is bringing your way today is going to shine, and no darkness will overcome it in Jesus' name. Powers of darkness are destroyed. 
all the philosophies and the knowledge and the ideas and everything of darkness, they're taken away from our lives in Jesus' name. If you will just connect with the Almighty God, the Creator God, through the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, something is going to happen. I said something is going to happen. All the things of darkness will vanish away in your life. The things that come at night that terrify you, and the things that come at night that trouble your mind, torment you, everything is going to be taken away. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended the age not. The darkness overcomes the age not. I'm talking to you tonight on the subject in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. The beginning of the whole world, God. The beginning of the family, God. The beginning of every single life, God. The beginning of your Christian life, God. The beginning of any project in your life, God. The beginning of anything victorious, anything successful in your life. If you're going to succeed at anything, make sure the beginning, God. In the beginning of a journey, God. In the beginning of traveling from here, from life, unto eternity, God. If you're going to have anything, anything in this world of substance, anything of this world of significance, anything of this world that you want to carry on through to eternity, in the beginning, God. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the unlimited power of the Creator. The unlimited power of the Creator. As we look at the vastness of the world, of the universe, of everything the Lord has made, you cannot but think and meditate on the very fact that this God has unlimited power, infinite power, eternal power, unchanging power, a power that cannot fail in anything it decides to do. The unlimited power of the Creator. Number two, the unchanging personality of the Creator. That as you look at God, what He was from all eternity, is what he is still today, and that is what he will be even until eternity. His love is the same, his knowledge the same, his wisdom the same, his compassion the same, his plan the same, his purpose the same, his ability the same, and whatever he decided he was going to do, he still has the power to carry everything out because we have the unchanging personality of the Creator. Point number three, the uncommon position of a converted creature. The uncommon position of a converted creature. When you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and you turn away from sin, when you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and say final, total, complete, forever, bye-bye to sin, when you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you become connected with Jesus, converted by Jesus, consecrated unto Jesus, committed unto Jesus. When you come and you come in conformity with the Lord Jesus Christ, such a converted creature, such a committed creature, and such a consecrated creature, and such a conformed creature, conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, the position you have, the position we have, and if two of us have in that position, we agree as touching anything, there's no limit as to what prayer power, prayer position, prayer authority that we have, the uncommon position of a converted creature. Number one, what's number one? Come back now, come back now. In Genesis chapter 1, we're talking about the unlimited power of the Creator. Look at this, it says, chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. There was nothing, and out of nothing God spoke the word, and everything came into being. It says, in the beginning, this mighty God, in the beginning, this 
of failing God in the beginning. This powerful God in the beginning. This God that cannot fail for your soul, for your spirit, for your body, for your family, and for the church, and for everyone. In the beginning, this mighty God created and he made and he formed the heaven and the earth. In fact, as you look at the rest of the Bible, the rest of the Bible is telling you, Anytime you want to think about the power of God, think about the creation. Anytime you're thinking about, can God do this? Will God do this? Will God achieve this? Will God perform this in my life? Think about the creation. Look at Jeremiah chapter 32. Always turn your mind back. And tonight, as you come to the Lord, can you say, turn your mind back to creation? Can you set a man free, totally from sin? And from sinning, you turn your mind back to the creation. Can you so break the power of cancel sin and make a man righteous and holy and pure from day to day for a whole year, for a whole life? Go back to the creation. Can you sanctify? Can, can you make a man so pure within and so holy through and through, within and without? It says, while you're measuring the power of the Almighty God, you turn your mind back to creation. Can you give the barren people, children, turn your mind back to the creation? See what God has done in the past. Can you heal the sick? If a person is sick, if a person is weak, can we make him completely whole? If a person is having mental problem and is deranged, is a lunatic, can the Lord make him totally normal? Turn your mind back to the creation and see the mighty power of God, unlimited and eternal and infinite. In Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 17, our Lord God, Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 17, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power. You see that? It's going back to the beginning. That's what you always do when you pray. When you are trying to see whether this promise of God will work for me or not. This prayer will be answered or not. Can God do this? Can he provide this? Can he heal this sickness? Can he save this sinner? Can he change this life? Can he transform this person? The sin that has overcome you all your life, can the Lord break the backbone of that sin that you become totally free, completely free? Free, free to live in righteousness, free to live in purity, and free to live in holiness all the days of your life. Can God do that? Can God make you an overcomer, a more, more than a conqueror, over all those evil habits of your life? You go back to the creation and say, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth. By thy great power and stretch out arm. See what follows there. And it says, and there is nothing too hard for thee. In your life tonight, there's nothing too hard for God. In your Christian life tonight, there's nothing too hard for God. In your family life tonight, look at your family and look at the needs you have in your family. This very first revival of the year, power is coming your way. The power that will roll away all the mountains in your family is coming your way tonight in Jesus' name. Because we go back to the creation of the world, the creation of the universe, and we say, Ah, Lord God, you the God of heaven, you have made the heaven and the earth by such a great power, by such an unlimited power, by such an immeasurable power, by such a power that no other person can exercise in the universe. And because of that, we know that there is nothing, nothing too hard for thee. Come to Isaiah. While Jeremiah is referring to the creation to measure the power of God, the measurable power, also Isaiah is going back to the creation and when you remember that God is creator, what can he not do? He can heal cancer. He can heal tuberculosis. He can heal paralysis. He can heal kidney problem. He can heal mental problem. Whatever it is, he can make a change in a moment of time. Because he is creator. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Look at this. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 26. 
lift up your eyes on high and behold who has created these things that bringeth out their host by number he calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might for that he is strong in power not one failure tonight there's no failure because you see what I said, see? He said, don't you remember that God created everything? If he created everything, every human being you see, everything you see here on earth, the Lord made everything. And because of that great, unlimited, immeasurable, eternal, unchanging power, he is able to do everything there is to do in your soul, in your spirit, in your body, in your family, in your business, anywhere, everywhere. Lift up your eyes on high. Don't keep looking down as if, you know, this power and that problem and this challenge and this difficult. Look up. Lift up your eyes on high. And behold, was made, created all these things, who has brought out all these things by their force, by their number. This, this one, this great God in heaven that calls everything by name and once he says, let there be, immediately it is. And tonight, when God says, let there be in your life, there will be. Let there be salvation, there will be. Let there be holiness, there will be. Let there be righteousness and purity in life that has been defiled, in life that has been deformed, in life that is dirty. And the Lord says, as you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are connected with Jesus Christ, and He says, Let there be righteousness and salvation, there will be in your life in Jesus' name. A person that is laid back for sickness and weakness and infirmity and deformity and demonic attack and the Lord says, deliverance is coming your way. Liberation is coming your way. Freedom is coming your way. And it says, let there be. There will be deliverance in your life in Jesus' name. And when it says, let there be healing, let there be victory, victory will come your way in Jesus' name. And then look at verse 28. As thou not known, it's asking you now. Didn't you hear that this mighty God created the whole of the universe? Didn't you hear? Have you not known? And hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, what follows? I said what follows? The creator of the ends of the earth. The creator of the ends of the earth. He fainteth not, neither is he weary, and there is no searching of his understanding. He has all the power, he has all the love, he has all the compassion, he has all the wisdom to do. Everything there is to do in your life, it will be done in Jesus' name. And begin to prepare your mind, begin to understand that with God all these things are very easy. All these things are possible to save a soul, to sanctify those who are saved. To feel and baptize with the Holy Ghost, the people who are saved and sanctified, and to heal those who are sick, and to deliver those who are oppressed, and to give blessing to anyone and everyone he thinks not, and his power has no limit. He will do it in your life. I'll be reading to you from the Old Testament. What does the New Testament say? about the mighty power of God, about his creative power, his transforming power, his saving power, his sanctifying power, his healing power, his redemptive power. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9. Just as the Old Testament has assured us, that this mighty God, irresistible God, unlimited God, by his unlimited, immeasurable power, created the whole of the universe. The Old Testament tells us, and the Old Testament is telling us the same thing. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world 
has been hid in God, God who created all things by Jesus Christ. God who created all things by Jesus Christ. And that God is going to do it tonight. I said he's going to do it tonight. Blind eyes will see. Lame legs will rise up and walk. Sinful souls will be forgiven and cleansed and strengthened to live in victory in Jesus' name. And the unsanctified will be sanctified. The lion temper inside you, that lion temper, the power of God will come tonight and crush that lion temper in Jesus' name. All the thing that is uh, making a person to have storm inside the soul, storm inside the mind, and storm inside the family, a great calm by the great power of the Lord will come and calm everything down tonight in Jesus' name. If God has unlimited power, if God has irresistible power, if God has immeasurable power, if God has a power that cannot fail, what is the consequence of that in your life? Number one, because of that power, is able to save. Number two, because of that power, is able to deliver. Number three, because of that power, is able to convert, able to change you to another nature, a nature that he desires. He wants to conform you to the image of Christ, is able to convert. Number four, is able to heal. Number, number five, is able to sanctify and make holy. You see, because of this power we're talking about, that is unlimited. This power we're talking about that is immeasurable. This power we're talking about that when it comes in your life, it makes a great change, a visible change, a visible transformation that everybody can see. This power is able to save. This power is able to deliver whatever the yoke in your life, whatever the curse in your life, that yoke is broken tonight in Jesus' name. And is able to convert, is able to convert a lion to a lamb, is able to convert a sinner to a saint, is able to convert a weak person to a strong person, is able to convert the fearful to the fearless, is able to convert a child of Satan unto a real child of God, and is able to heal whatever the sickness, whatever the infirmity. Whatever is the deformity that you are carrying about, the mighty power of God tonight is able to heal, it will heal you in Jesus' name. Able to sanctify the soul, sanctify the spirit, make you pure within, make you pure without. Pure heart, pure mind, pure soul, pure life, pure language, pure thinking, pure thought, pure life, pure perspective, everything pure, a pure walk for the Lord, able to sanctify, able to do all things in our lives, able to strengthen and support, able to keep us from falling. All you need to do is come. And you come by faith, believing it will save even tonight in Jesus' name. That's point number one, the limited power of the Creator. Come to point number two, the unchanging personality of the Creator. The unchanging personality of the Creator. What do we learn about this? Girl? Come back now to Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. What do we learn about God there? What do we learn that is mighty? If He could create the whole universe just like that with a word, He created everything, He is mighty. What do we learn? He is loving. You know, He existed from all eternity without us. But because of His love, God is love. Because of his love, he said, I'm going to create the universe. I'm going to create man so they can fellowship with me. And he's still the same. His personality of love is unchanging. Not only that, 
We know that he is the one that has creative power, creative authority. And he is the one that is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. He knows all things. And this God remains the same. And look at Matthew chapter 22. The people that find it difficult to pray. And the people that do not have the miracles they ought to have, Jesus said there is something lacking in their lives. And once you discover this, everything will open up in your life. I said everything will open up in your life. Look at Matthew chapter 22 verse 29. Matthew 22 verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Those two things. Not knowing the scriptures, not knowing the power of God. The people that err, they err about salvation. That is, they're erroneous. They go astray concerning salvation. Why? Because they do not know the scriptures. They do not know the power of God. They err about healing. They say, I don't know whether God can heal me or not. They go astray in thinking about healing, in praying about healing, in talking about healing, their own healing or the healing of their loved ones. You err because you do not know the scriptures, not the power of God. Other people wonder, can God deliver me if you are saying, I don't know whether I'm going to be delivered or not. That's ignorance, that error. That darkness, that confusion, that uncertainty in your mind is because you do not know the scriptures, you do not know the power of God. That means then, if you want to talk straight and pray straight and pray right and believe right and accept the blessings of God in your life, there are two things that are very important. Number one, know the scripture that God is mighty, that God is creator, that God is unchanging, that God remains is the same as ever. Number two, you know the power of God. And I pray that that power will work in your life. Are you still there? Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1. I'm reading now something that looks impossible, something that looks incredible, something that looks like, can this ever happen? Something that looks like, will this ever take place? Maybe there's a problem in your life, a problem in your family, a problem with your children, a problem with your spiritual life, a problem in your personal, professional, or domestic life, and you're wondering, will this problem be solved? Tonight, that problem will be solved. Look at this in Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? How shall this be? How can this happen? Seeing I know not a man. What confronted Mary, the virgin? Well, the angel was saying something was going to happen contrary to nature. Contrary to science, contrary to natural knowledge, contrary to history, contrary to everything we have ever known, and it's going to happen this moment of time. Maybe the Lord is telling you a miracle is coming your way, and that miracle is contrary to nature, is contrary to history. It's contrary to human knowledge. It's contrary to human experience. And you're wondering like Mary, how shall this be? Look at verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Yeah. What a wonderful scene in this year. If you bring the Holy Ghost to be present and prominent in your life. You see, there are many people, they go to church, or maybe they even come to our church here. Maybe they believe you can be saved. Maybe they believe you can be sanctified. They don't believe you can be immersed in the Holy Ghost. Controlled by the Holy Ghost. Baptized in the Holy Ghost. 
enveloped in the Holy Ghost, empowered by the Holy Ghost, endued for the Holy Ghost. You miss a lot in your life if you don't understand, if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the immersion in the Holy Ghost, the empowerment of the Holy Ghost, and the endowment of power by the Holy Ghost. You miss a lot in your life. And here it says, if the impossible was going to happen in the life of Mary, if the incredible was going to be experienced in the experience of Mary, if this unbelievable thing was going to take place in the life of Mary, the Holy Ghost will come upon thee. I pray that will bring the Holy Ghost where he thought to be in every one of our lives in Jesus. Jesus name, saved, sanctified, and baptized, and filled, and immersed, and empowered, and endued by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the Holy Seed, which shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of the Highest. Look at verse 37, for with God, tell me, Verse 37, for with God, verse 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. This day, nothing shall be impossible. This month, nothing shall be impossible. This year, nothing shall be impossible. I believe, I believe in God, nothing shall be impossible. I believe in Jesus Christ, my Savior, nothing shall be impossible. I believe in the Holy Ghost, nothing shall be impossible. I welcome God the Almighty into my life, nothing shall be impossible. I welcome Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Redeemer, the Captain of my salvation. I welcome Jesus Christ, the Healer, the Redeemer into my life, nothing shall be impossible. I welcome the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit. I welcome the Holy Ghost into my life and it says nothing shall be impossible. Sage, sanctified, filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost from that point on nothing shall be impossible in your life. You see your faith grows when you are saved. That's good faith. When you are sanctified, you have greater faith. And when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, your faith comes to a level that you just know. With that presence of the Holy Ghost in your life, with that prominence of the Holy Ghost in your life, with that preeminence and power of the Holy Ghost in your life, nothing shall be impossible in Jesus' name. For with God, nothing shall be impossible impossible. We're coming to Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 6. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. It says, for I am the Lord, I change not. For I am the Lord, I change not. He said, did you meet me in chapter 1 of Genesis when I created all things? I'm the same. I change not. Did you hear of me when I brought the whole of the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, out of captivity? He said, I am still the same. I am God. I change not. Have you heard of me when I healed Naaman of leprosy? He says, I'm still God. I change not. Did you hear when I brought water out of the rock? He says, I am still God. I change not. Were you there? Did you hear when all those enemies of the children of his were destroyed in a moment of time. He says, I am God, I change not. Therefore the sons of Jacob are not consumed. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, reading from verse 8. Hebrews 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. We're going to read that together. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. One, two, three, go. Can you read that again? It's our Savior. It's still the same. 
is a healer, is still the same, is a deliverer, is still the same, is the worker of miracles and the producer of signs and wonders in our lives. And he said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. He saves that kills, he's a savior. Is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He healed the blind. Is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He delivers the demoniac. That is the people that have demons and are possessed of demons. Is Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever? Is about to do that in your life. I said he's about to do that in your life. You need salvation, he'll save you. You need healing, he'll heal you. You need sanctification, it will sanctify you. You need to be made holy in your heart and holy in your mind get to be uh, to be ready for heaven. That's exactly what he's going to do. He'll purify you with being, he'll, he'll save you and sanctify you and make you holy and righteous and pure within because it's the same yesterday and today and forever. Matthew chapter 19 verse 26. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. With God all things are possible. What he ever was is still the same today. What he was in the past is still the same tonight. What he was before is still the same in the new year. Point number three now, the uncommon position of a converted creature. The uncommon position of a converted creature. We're coming to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, I read from verse 1. Genesis chapter 1, we're looking at verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Come to verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. We'll be talking about God the creator. God the mighty one. God the powerful one. God, the one that cannot fail. And it says, let us make man in our image. What does that mean? God is pure. Man was created pure. God is holy. Man was created holy. God is love. Man was created loving. God is irresistible, mighty and powerful. Man was created irresistible, mighty, and powerful. God is great. Man was created great, the crown of God's creation. God is unfailing, he cannot fail. Man was created unfailing. God is sinless, free from sin, pure, holy, through and through. Man was created sinless. Pure and holy through and through. Let us create man, let us make man in our image, at our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. Always remember that. He created man, in his own image, created man pure, holy, righteous, sinless, loving, forgiving, gracious, great, high, untarnished, or soiled by sin. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, male and female created he them. When God created man and woman, he created both man and woman holy and righteous and also to have dominion. Man fell. But then Christ came to restore man unto that holy status, pure status, gracious status, 
sinless status, spotless status, blameless status. That's the desire of God. He still wants his nature to be in us, his likeness to be in us, his power to be in us, his ability to be in us, and his might to be in us. In some age, I'm reading from verse 3, some age, we're looking at verse 3. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him. Look at this now. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. I pray God will bring us to this understanding this year. I say God will bring us to this understanding this year. For God has made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and with honor. He wants us to be glorious, gracious, honorable. That glory the glory of holiness, the glory of righteousness, the glory of purity. He'll bring it to every one of our lives in Jesus' name. You see, when God planned the creation of man, he wasn't planning that, you know, Satan will be his Lord, that sin will be his Lord, that evil will be overcoming him, overpowering him, that lying, deception, Evil, sinfulness, adultery, fornication, stealing will be overcoming him. When God created man, he wasn't thinking of creating a man that would be crying every day, O oh, wretched sinner that I am, who shall save me from this body of death? He created man holy and righteous and pure and great. And he wants to have that same sin in our life. And this year will be a year of victory in Jesus' name. Victory over sin, and victory over sickness, and victory over Satan, and victory over evil, and victory over all the powers of darkness. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. But says, thou madest him to have dominion. Thou madest him to have dominion. You'll be more than a conqueror. You'll conquer sin in your life. You'll conquer evil habit in your life. You'll conquer. You see, it's the sin that makes a crack in our lives that allows sickness to come in. That allows all the bad things uh, that dominate life, that touch our lives to come in. But you know, when he made us, he wanted us to have dominion. And he's still bringing us back to that dominion tonight. That made us into have dominion over the works of thine hand. That was put all things under his feet. That was put all things under his feet. Sin will be under your feet. Evil spirits will be under your feet. Demons will be under your feet. Sickness will be under your feet. All the attacks and all the causes and all the yokes will be under your feet in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 42, I'm reading from verse 5. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 5, thus says, The Lord God, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth bread unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that were therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness. I will hold thine hand. I will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people and for a light to the Gentiles. Verse 7. Tell me to open the blind eyes. This is the day. Bring out the prisoners from the prison. This is the time. And them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. It will happen now. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to given images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and uh, 
and and new things do I declare before the spring forth I tell you of them salvation has come healing has come deliverance has come holiness has come sanctification has come baptism in the Holy Ghost has come all things, all things, all things that we need because he is creator and he did it at the beginning he has not changed, he is doing it today everything, every good thing has come in your life in Jesus name are you ready? I said are you ready? I mean this first time of revival in the year that you empty your mind of anything that will hinder you and you say by the grace of God from this very first revival things will never be the same in my life anymore why don't you rise up why don't you rise up and tell the Lord it's going to be a new beginning a new new beginning he has creative power, redemptive power, unchanging power, transforming power. He's going to recreate you. He's going to remake you, reform you, transform your life. The weakness of the past is gone. Newness of life. Newness of life. Newness of life. Newness in your soul. Newness in your spirit. Newness in your character. A new level, higher level of righteousness. Higher level of holiness. Holiness in the day. Holiness in the night. Holiness in everything. Holiness in small things. Holiness in big things. Holiness. Holiness in the night. Holiness in the day. Holiness when you are alone. Holiness when you are with people. Holiness for the man. Holiness for the woman. Righteousness. A recreation in your spirit. A recreation in your soul. A total change, a total transformation. Give your life to Christ and be saved. Give your life to Christ and be saved. Look unto me, all the ends of the earth. Are you saved? Are you forgiven? Are you transformed? And be converted. He's able. He is able. He is able. Able to forgive. He is able. Able to transform. He is able. Able to transform your life. He is able. Able to take sin away, take it away from your mind, take it away from your tongue, take it away from your life. He is able, able to sanctify, able to purify. to baptize in the Holy Ghost, able, able, he wants to do it right now, a new thing in your soul, a new thing in your spirit, a new thing in your life, he can change that lion temper and make it a lion temper. Take that anger away from your heart. Give you peace and calmness, love, tenderness. Take that hatred away from your heart. Your peace of mind. 
real salvation in Christ. He is able, and after you are saved, he is able to keep you from falling. Make you live a consistent life, a pure life, a holy life, every day, all the days of your life. He is able. His power is unlimited. His power is immeasurable. His power is eternal. His power is unchanging. Make it an appointment with the Almighty God. Let him do it now. Let him do it now. Lord, I surrender myself unto you. I surrender my life unto you. Confess all the sins of the past. Let this day be a day of redemption, of salvation, of holiness, of sanctification, of the power of the Holy Ghost coming into your life. Reviving you, restoring you, rejuvenating you, recreating you, regenerating you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, God has done it. I said God has done it. From this day, the power to live in righteousness will fulfill your life in Jesus' name. We're going to pray the first prayer now, and then after that, we'll come to healing. Healing is coming in a tremendous way tonight in this place. Believe in a tremendous way tonight in this place. Impossibilities are happening tonight in Jesus' name. Before I come to that second prayer, let me pray this prayer for all those of you that say this year is going to be a year of victory. This year is going to be a year of holiness. And then of you, maybe you are just telling the Lord, oh Lord, forgive the past and Lord, I want real salvation. I want total salvation. I want total redemption. We're going to pray now. Every word we say, you and I, together, and we agree together, it is confirmed in Jesus' name. Just raise up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, for everyone who are sent by by to sin and they welcome Jesus the Savior in their lives save them in Jesus name I pray Lord your spirit will confirm that their sins are forgiven that their names are written in the book of life in Jesus name and the power to go and sin no more give unto them in Jesus name those who are children of God who are saying, Oh Lord, keep me. Make me stable in righteousness and holiness, in sanctification. Oh Lord, do it for them in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, your people will not be falling and rising. Keep us holy. Keep us righteous. Keep us sanctified. Keep us faithful. Keep us true. Keep us honest. I pray, Lord, holiness from Calvary will come into every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Now we come to the second session. Every sickness, we're going to remove that by the name of the Lord. Every infirmity will be removed in the name of the Lord. And so, look at that uh, sickness now for the last time. You'll not see it after the prayer. Insanity is going now. Any 
every kind of infirmity, sickness in your body, disease in your body, everything is going now in Jesus' name. The Lord says, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Healing has come. Deliverance has come. I want you to identify the sickness where it is, and then after the prayer, you check up yourself. If you are blind, your eyes should open. If your limbs should rise up and walk. If there's a kind of weakness inside you, your heart is weak, the strength should come. If your kidney is feeling life, is coming to that kidney right now. If the God of creation, creation is going to take place in your life. Are you ready? After the prayer, will you check up? Yes. Will you have a testimony? Yes. Amen. Yes. I said, Amen. Yes. I said, Amen. Yes. Father, we come before you. We thank you because you have reminded us that you are the creator God in heaven. That with you, all things are possible. You created our body in the first place, and therefore we know if there's anything wrong with it, you're able to recreate it all over again. I come to you on behalf of every brother and every sister here. Oh Lord, let there be a recreation in Jesus' name. Lord, definite healing, definite miracle, definite deliverance, definite signs and wonders. Do it in every life in Jesus' name. That is sanity, brain problem. I command that evil spirit come out in Jesus' name. That epilepsy, I command the spirit of epilepsy come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for everyone that has blind eyes or dim eyesight. Light will come right now. Touch those blind eyes. Touch those dim eyes. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who have any problem in their skin or in their blood. I pray, Lord, that blood will be healed right now. That skin disease, take it away right now. Lord, any problem in the ear, any problem of speaking, oh Lord, touch them right now. And I pray that the deafness will vanish away in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm asking for any other part of the body that has any problem, uh, maybe hands are withered, legs are withered, their joints or whatever. This first day of revival, I send the power of God right into your body now. Be healed in Jesus' name miracle now you give to your people. Deliverance grant unto your people. Healing give unto your people. Signs and wonders give unto them in Jesus' name. Confirm the miracle in every life. The God of all flesh, all things are possible with you. Perform the wonders in their lives right now. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. You have got the miracle already. I said you got it already. Praise the Lord. If you check up, you'll see God has done it. Amen. My name is Sister Mwale Comfort. I'm from Railway Compound District, Odiaba. Last year, devil wanted to use me and my children to balance his account. But fortunately for me, he failed. And unfortunately for him, he was disappointed. Fortunately for me, I was, I am, I conquer. Unfortunately for him, he was disappointed. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah. It was in the month of September that I and my children went to the village to visit their grandfather. So on our way coming, 
we did balancing, alarming everything at Asaba. We fell our car, and then on reaching Abudu, suddenly the bikes are just punctured. So my, my son contro uh, controlled it very well, but what happened was that the brother, the younger brother who was sitting with him in the front, just suddenly draw the handbrake. So as he draw the handbrake, the motor now swap up uh, to the next road, cross the Los Rios that we just passed, cross a, a Tisalat Coast that we just passed, and went straight to the bush and start somersaulting, somersaulting. He somersaulted up to four or five times until finally he stopped with all the four legs up. All our heads were down. So my son now used his elbow to break one place uh, of the glass, uh, the windscreen in the front, where they, uh, they, they creep out. Then they went to remove one side of the glass, where my, I, I also came out. When I came out, I was standing. I don't even know what to do the next thing. I said, okay, I remember a song. There will be no lack, no loss, no limitation. There will be no lack, no loss, no limitation. There will be no lack, no loss, no limitation. Say the Lord God of hosts to his servant. So I was just singing, 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 singing. Praise the Lord. So the concert we were to and the, uh, and the Lord's week, when they passed a little bit, they came at the stop. Ah, let's go and see who's ever is still alive, so that we can take and uh, we bring us and rush to the hospital. Immediately they came, they found all of us standing. They said, Ah, praise the Lord. When they saw us standing, they were surprised. They said, Ah, what is this? Did these people come out from this car? No, no, no. What are you people standing here? Let's go to the car and rescue those who are still alive so that we can take them to the hospital. Then, one of them said, there are the people standing by you. They say, eh? These people came, from this, came out from this bus I have never seen. Then they ask, Madam, what is your secret? I say, ah, the Almighty God has spoken through the mouth of His servant, the, servant, the Moses of our days, like that. There will be no loss of my children's life. There will be no lack, no loss, no limitation. They say, ah, you are going to hold, consider without your, do your God. Hold out your God. Ah, the other man said, I too am a member of Deeper Life, oh. The other man said, I will come and join that Deeper Life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No lack, no limitation, no loss. That will be your portion in Jesus' name. God who has done that for our sister and the family, we do it your own children in Jesus' name. Next testimony. Eba mi yolua logo. Eba mi jesu logo. Oruko mi ni arabi ni karola in soji kwe. Mo wani e kwen yi kola o du si. Mo du kwa la wa alano fo uti alano se ni no aye mi ati ni no e bi mi. Ni a kwa kwa mo du kwa la wa alano fo yi bala o kwa mi. Mo du kwa la wa alano wu kwe alano wa amiri ni ajun 1991 ni no i jodi pa lai. La ti ba no alano se wa kwa lu mi alano do ju adura ti ni. Eba mi ni olu alogo. Mo du kwa la wa alano fo uti alano se fun wa mami to duro ti mi yi. Eh, Ninu was who can wow do talk or ya? Boy, also can so light to one while they lay away. Oh, Timorin, you pay a time, a jet, you better see you who can you lay later? Go yemi, so one moment we go ye alone. Lang ye lay most of one way, your moping one way, your money, I want a kilo lefa. I went yourself for me, we grab a yay last at the domini. One king low and kind last at the domifon. More low, can you fool me to a toss of one sibe? We already sat in, can you say? Ni ba to se mo gbe lo si ile wo san ni general hospital oke odo won pa won pa bere fun wa won ni ka se test ori si merin won pa bere fun wa leyin test yi won mo gba bere yi mo ni mo ni won fun omo yen ni abere yen leyin abere yen se yen lo se o kun si le bi ojo bi merin e se yin to pada soke ba kan na awon nkan ti mo nlo fun tale tale mo to bere si ni ilo fun mi o ti e le gba lo si hospital mo sugbon gba to ya te nigba ti pa go wa bo lo ne pa go suke jila or do talk or die. Moas of one long, money or long money is saying in his aim. Money, we must have we can't even see Yatiba, baby, back on me, Sile, 
nigba na ni eyan olorun a gba mi gbogbo eyin bi eyan ju mi gaga bi eyan mo ti gbe eyan ju eyan olorun eyin ni ke si a se pe ise na mo dupe lowo olorun tori pe na se gba ti mo ti gba gbo olorun o doju adura ti ni nigbati awa ti nu pago osu keji la mo so fun olorun mo ni olorun mo gbe omo yi wa si odo yin e si a se a se pe ninu aye omo ye e fi ari si emi na le nu ke mi na le jade lati jeri si ti to bi eyan olorun ni waju ijo olorun alaye mo dupe lowo olorun wi pe leyin ipagbo wa leyin adura oluso agbosan ti won gba fun wa de no pagbo yi ni osu ni odun to koja mo dupe lowo olorun wi pe olorun si a se pe ise ninu ago ara omo na e se wuwu ibo se ko ra lati gba na niyan ti mi ori mo e ba mi yin olorun logo praise the lord praise the lord we are serving a living god This sister brought her son to testify to the healing power in the name of Jesus. The name of the child is Shodipe. She he has a swollen leg last year and she took the child to hospital and used various types of drugs to cure the swelling. But unfortunately, those drugs could not take care of the problem but during the december retreat she brought the child to the uh, program and started calling upon god crying unto god challenging god that your power is able and this is your special area of uh, demonstration and you can heal this child and If my father and my mother reject me, you go. You will receive me. She started crying to God, and as the man of God prayed concerning this particular problem in the life of this child, the swelling just disappeared, and now the child is free. The God that did our own, we do your own in Jesus' name. Tonight, the man of God is coming up again, and. If you can but just obey whatever the Lord says through the man of God, you will receive your needed miracle in Jesus name. It is your turn to give testimony.